gain sheets. Why do we need them and what are they for? So gain sheets is a term used in DTF or direct to film printing in order to tile either individual images, multiple the individual images or multiple different images. So the key is to try to maximize the space and have print area or use up print space in every square inch possible. Given that there is a small gap in between so that you can cut in between each of the images and have them cut out into individual images. So we recommend a 0.4 inch gap around each of the images and that'll give enough space to cut in between them safely without risking cutting some of the edges of a different design that it's adjacent to. So for example, if I need 50 of the same image, it would look like this. If I need 10 of these, 15 of these, and 25 of these, it would look like this. In this tutorial, I'll go over how to do this in Adobe Photoshop. I'll also go over a few tips and tricks that I came up with that'll make things a little bit easier for you to space each of the images. So remember to hit subscribe below to stay up to date with my DTF tutorials. Let's go. You want to start off by organizing your files. So I'm going to show you an example of organizing a file. So here's the graphic. There's a transparent additional border around this graphic. So we want to trim that. So go to image, trim, and we'll want to trim all four sides. So just the transparent pixels, click OK. And then we'll want to resize this image to 10 inches where I want it. So 10 inches width. And with that, since the ratio is linked, it'll also decrease the height in a proportional manner. Okay, so let's take note of the width and the height. The width will be 10 inches. Height is 12.214. So let's save, close, and rename this. So save, close this. Ten by twelve point two one four and I'll say I'll need two pieces of this. So that's the format that I am used to and that keeps things really organized. Let's start by opening up our gang sheet and let's create a new file. So 22 inches and the height is a maximum of 100 but we'll just put 100 and then we can always resize it later and trim that excess. We'll keep it at 300 resolution, 300 dpi and CMYK color. So by default it's usually RGB, change it to CMYK color. We're going to use white background. It's up to you, you can use transparent, but white is a little bit easier to see uh, given that it's not white font. But you can use transparent or white, but with white you just have to remember to delete that background file before sending it over to get printed with the DTF printing method. And then color profile, you'll want to change that to coded FOGRA FOGRA 39. Then click create. And here is my blank canvas for the gang sheet. What I want to do is show, any, show you an example of text and what you can do with text. So we're going to type out white text. I'm going to change it to white. So just to show you that it does make this difficult if it is white. And you can always toggle this background to see the white text. Next we'll be adjusting some settings in Photoshop that'll make it easier for us to create the gap between each of the images. Turning on the grid. So go to show grid and then this is not the correct size so 
you'll want to go over to edit preferences guides grid and slices and go down to the grid section uh, changes to custom I like to use the line you can use dots if you want changes to 0.4 inches that's the number that we like to use to divide each of our images so at least 0.4 uh, you can up to you you can decide if you want to go down to 0.25 but once you get to a, a closer number it does create a little bit more of a challenge when you're cutting the different designs out so uh, I think it's not worth risking cutting a design especially for important jobs a 0.4 seems to be a good number for us so now you have a grid here uh, we'll also want to uh, go over to view show already checked so we can see the grid and also show layer edges so this creates this kind of border around your design so that you can see uh, whether or not you're overlapping make sure you're on this move tool I have auto select checked here and this allows me to left click onto the layer and allow it to select it so it keeps things a little bit easier when you're working with multiple files uh, without it you would have to click control and then left click in order to select it let me show you hold control and then click it in order to select it so whichever you prefer up to you just toggle it on and off here so for text like this uh, if you had a font in here that we do not have which is most of the most of the cases you'll want to rasterize this so you raster it by right clicking the layer and then going to rasterize layer and that way you won't need to send us the font in order to uh, send us this gang sheet because without it we wouldn't be able to to create the correct uh, or wouldn't show up with the correct font on our end if we don't have the font already so just to make it uniform the way you handle it is to rasterize that layer another thing you can do let's say I wanted two of these you can hold alt and then left click and then I hold down shift to keep it straight and this will allow me to create a duplicate of the same layer other thing I can do is if I select the background I can align this to the top just like so the way I want to work here is I want to choose the largest item and then work my way down so this file we did resize so I just want to make sure that I have the naming correct 10 inches by 12.217 so let's rename that 10 inches and let's say we want two pieces of this so I'm going to drag it into my gang sheet click enter and so I see that this file ends here so moving it right about there looks good I can always align it to the left and then I need two pieces because I indicated that in my file so it makes the workflow a lot easier oh so in order to copy this I can press Control J will create another layer or I can hold alt and left click uh, by holding shift it kind of makes it so it uh, goes along a linear line and right about there is where I want it so using this grid is very helpful
so moving on to the next image let's see my next biggest one is probably this 16 inch wide one here so let's bring that in it looks like an image that I would probably rotate so rotate it I'm holding shift and then dragging to turn it which I believe see what the angles that it creates uh, it goes 90 degrees 75 60 so increments that are about 15 degrees apart so without holding shift it can be anything but holding shift makes it a lot easier to to turn it and rotate it based on my file naming all I need is one of these images so holding shift and selecting both this one and this one I can see how much distance I need so looks pretty good there I just need to drag it over to the left and let it click so if your your images aren't snapping you can make sure that the setting is correct um, so snap is on snap to grid is where you want to be in order for it to snap to the grid so moving on to my next example uh, my next design is the transfer superstars logo where did it go right there So with that, I need two pieces of this. So again, I'm going to select the one that's above just to see how much distance I need. And right about there, you can press up or down to shift it, uh, do micro shifts. Um, and then selecting this background. along with the graphic layer and then aligning to left will align it perfectly to the left so I'm trying to create two of these so I'm holding alt left click and shift and drag and let go So moving on to the next image, this is Lion logo which you'll be familiar with from our sample packs. So this is a fairly small image here, I need four pieces of those. So with this, it looks like I can probably scatter this around. Let's try to flip this and see if it'll work. So it looks like it'll work here. I'm going to align it to the top right. And then see if we can fit one more here. probably not I'm not sure if there's any specs from this other graphic alongside of it so I'm not gonna risk that but what I can do is copy it again looks like there's plenty of room here so again I need four of them so let's here's my third one here's my fourth one there you go and so again that's why I use I start working with the larger images and then work my way through t with the smaller images so now let me remove that background or hide that background I'm gonna throw in this dachshund so so 
So I just wanted to show you how I might resize this image in Photoshop. Uh, so originally this image is 10 inches wide, but let's say I decided I want to resize this image to 8 inches wide instead. So again, you have to be careful here if you're resizing because if you don't have it this checked here, it won't be constrained uh, and it'll just compress the width of it without accounting for the height uh, in order to be proportionate. So make sure you check that if you want it to be proportionally um, resized. So there you go, that's the difference. So let me show you again. So this is if it's proportionally resized and if you forget to uncheck that, it'll just kind of turn it into a lot shorter looking dog. So we need five pieces of these. So with five pieces, I might turn it 90 degrees. and then align it to the left and then let's duplicate them So it looks like I can't fit that many into that same area. So let's try again. probably fit one more this way okay so it looks like it did the job and now for the last image my superstar image 10 inches wide six pieces okay So if you wanted to be really accurate about this, then you could hit Control T to transform and then on the Y axis here you can add 0.4 inches and then press enter so that would be exactly 0.4 inches away from the bottom of this previous set so again multiple ways of doing the same thing some more accurate than others some easier than others so this grid method just saves me time so i'm not trying to calculate the little micro um, distances between the borders but if that's something you have time for, feel free to do that. So you now you know both methods. And then now that you're done with the gang sheet, you'll want to check if there's any items that are linked. 
so linked images would have a link logo on here um, so when we receive files that have a linked image if the other linked image isn't sent to us as well we wouldn't be able to fire we wouldn't be able to see that other image that is linked to let me show you an example of what it would look like if we had a linked image so press enter here see this link icon here the chain link icon that means it's a linked image so in order to unlink or emb embed that image into this file you go right click onto the layer embed linked and that'll embed it into this file so I'll delete that because we don't need it but I just wanted to go over that with you so let's trim this file here I'm going to click on the marquee tool actually the best way to trim it would just be to hit alt hold alt press I and R that creates the trim tool or you can go to image trim and then I just want to trim from the bottom hmm and then make sure oh, so one thing I do need to do is delete this or hide this background layer here uh, then I can go ahead and trim the transparent space I'm going to trim just the bottom okay and then just kind of take a glance at everything I can toggle the grid by hitting control apostrophe or you can go to view show and uncheck this grid you can highlight all of the layers and just to see and double check triple check if there's any graphics that are overlapping So they are not um, if you wanted to fill in any empty space like for example here just for fun if you needed some test prints or so um, you can just create a little smaller version and just fill up any extra space so here's maybe another one I would just do just for fun there control zero kind of show you the your entire artboard so again make sure you're deleting that white layer or unchecking that before you export and then let's take note of our size here so we have it at 22 by about 64 rounded up inches so 22 by 64 again we're making sure that our resolution's at 300 so let's go ahead and export this file and this should be ready to print for DTF printing direct to film and we'll actually save as we can save as a PDF and let's call this uh, let's date it 0717 uh, game sheet 22 by 64 and I need one piece of this so we're gonna make sure that this is set at high quality and everything else is the same so just in case you wanted to double check that your settings are the same this is what I have this is what we use and I'm gonna click Save PDF 
and that just saved the PDF for me so let's take a look at the file size so give it a little bit there you go a pretty big file size but it has all the images in there if you want to take it a step further you can click out of the background layer and merge visible that'll merge everything that was visible into one layer So what you'll notice is that we've significantly reduced the file size for the gang sheet file. So if this is what you wanted to do, you'll go ahead and merge visible. If you still wanted to retain the editing capabilities, you wouldn't mess with the merge visible and you'll just keep it as the file was before we did the merge visible process. So once you receive your gang sheet, it'll look something like this. So everything is spaced out nicely. You maximize all the space that you could. So you can place the images however you'd like. I mean, if you wanted to fill in some more of the empty space, you're more than welcome to with the gang sheet. But there's also enough room here to cut in between each of the designs, yet not risk cutting off some of the some of the designs that are adjacent to each other. So this is about a little bit over 60 inches long. So probably a little bit bigger in person than when you're looking at a screen. If you're able to pick up any Photoshop tips today, click that like button and let me know. And if you have any blurry image issues or blurry graphics, I have a tutorial over here you'll want to check out. I go over changing a 72 DPI to a 300 DPI image. We'll catch you on that next one.